Okay, well while we wait, we'll hand it over to, to Nick Norris. All right, thanks everybody. I, I don't have a presentation, so uh, I don't need to worry about the technology here. Um, but what I wanted to talk about in relationship to this plan was this idea of thinking big and how that happens and through the lens of some projects uh, that I think influence this proposal. Um, and so to, to start, um, when you think about what it means to dream and to think about things, um, think about what that does for your psyche and the psyche of those around you. Um, we, we have the ability, when we think big, to overcome the tendency to think about barriers and things that get in our way. We can eliminate those types of, types of things sometimes if, we're, if we turn on our, our brains and allow them to, to um, think differently. Um, it spurs our creativity, right? And um, I think as, you'll, as we get into this presentation and, and hear from, from the folks who put this plan together, I think you'll start seeing that creative thought process that they went through uh, to get there. And it helps enliven our, ourselves and those around us when we start communicating. I mean, look at how many people are in this room right now that, you know, I think the first time that, that I talked to these two about this, when, when was that? Like, I don't know, a year and a half ago, a year and a half ago, maybe 18 months ago, um, two years ago. You know, and now look at, look at how many people are interested in this, the level of, I mean, there's elected officials in the room, there's appointed officials, there's developers that I recognize, there's some long-standing community members here, um, there's people who work in the various development fields, whether they're architects or engineers, um, all interested in what has often been viewed as kind of the back door of our downtown. And, and here we are trying to think about how can we view that differently. So think about some of the examples from around the world that maybe some of you are familiar with, right? All of these things started with somebody's imagination. Um, you think about the Statue of Liberty, the Eiffel Tower, even Paris started with somebody's vision for how it can be. The Erie Canal, that was somebody's vision that became a huge engineering feat at the time. Um, all of those things are, are um, these great examples of, what, of how we think big. We have those locally too. Um, you know, I'm, I'm often asked what, and I forgot to really interest myself, I'm the planning director for Salt Lake City. Um, but I'm often asked, what do I think is the biggest thing the city's ever done? And when you think about that, like, it probably means something different to everybody. But one of the things that always comes back to me is preserving City Creek Canyon. That's probably the most significant thing the city has ever done and stuck to. Like, that was from the very beginning of the settlement of the valley. And we, we have somehow, some way, managed to preserve that. And I think it's a great example. Um, but how do we do it in reality? So um, I went and I took a look at the history of what Denver did around their Union Station to um, try to think about how that story was told and how it unfolded. Um, obviously, the first step is to get the idea out there. That's what we're doing right now, right? And that's, how, that's what, what this group did when they approached me two years ago and started talking to our city council members, the business community, and, and uh, anybody else who was willing to give them an audience. Um, they, they started building that support. They figured out who needs to know about it and how to help those people realize that they like it, right? That it's something that they can get behind. Um, ultimately, you need the decision makers to buy into your vision. And one of the reasons why that's really important is because it builds the staying power and I'm in a minute, I'm gonna to get to some of uh, how that unfolded in, in Denver in that timeline that they went through. Um, but the first big move, after you have that, get the word out, you start talking about it, is to somehow get it officially sanctioned, right? Um, get it in a plan. Maybe the first step is, is a feasibility study. Maybe it's something about uh, talking to the elected officials to have it adopted as part of a community's plan or the city's plan somehow. Um, the other big thing that happens at that point is 
you get to identify the challenges too. There's always going to be people who are who want to throw out barriers, who want to discourage you, um, who want to identify all of the obstacles. And a key part of getting a plan to reality is figuring out how to acknowledge those obstacles, how to overcome them, how to respond to them in a way that you still maintain your support. Um, and sometimes that support goes away, right? That's just the reality of it. But let's get into a little bit about um, Denver. Um, so I think it's important, this is not something that's gonna be in five years or 10 years, right? That's just kind of the reality of a big, huge project like this. So in um, going way back, 1988, the city and the owners of the Union Terminal building, that's the, the historic building there, entered into a development agreement. And that development agreement did two things. It preserved the train station, but it gave those property owners additional development potential that the zoning didn't allow. So it was a trade-off. And so think back, 1988. So I don't know, I mean, looking around this room, I'm guessing there's a lot of people who trains, if they were on your mind, it was because you were playing with them. I was probably in that same boat, right? Um, then the next big move was they did, uh, Denver did a, a, what they call the Union Station Intermodal Feasibility Study. Sound familiar, right? 1996 is when that happened. And you know what it showed? It wasn't feasible. That the ridership, the transit, that they thought would be generated at that time wasn't gonna justify the outcome. But they didn't stop. And that this is a key point. And also through this period, they had changes in mayors, they had changes in, changes in city council, they had changes in the business community leadership, um, but the idea stuck. Uh, so 2001, they finally got light rail to Union Station. So they had built their light rail, their main light rail line, but they finished the extension to get to Union Station. 2003, they passed the Denver Fast Tracks, which expanded their uh, light rail lines to other communities with Denver Station being the center of it. That was the destination. And also keep in mind, they still have the freight running right through the edge of their downtown. All of this sounds familiar, right? We've gone through almost all of these same steps as a community. Um, so the first, what I think is the biggest catalyst that occurred in Denver happened in 2004. And that's when Denver, for the very first time, adopted their Union Station plan. That's the plan that led to what we see on the ground today. It wasn't until 2008 that they started putting the zoning in place to implement that plan. So it took them four years after the adoption to update that plan and get the zoning in place. Um, and that was really the trigger. Now what did it take to get that zoning in place? So getting back to partnerships, they had 70 different organizations who were involved. Most of those organizations had multiple people involved um, to come up with that final plan. And that plan that they started working on in 2008. 2014, the first, the first phase of it is when it opened. Um, and the rest of that, I think, is, is history at this point, right? You've seen how much it's, or you will see maybe, or if you are ever, do, do what was suggested, jump on Google Earth, or if you've been to that part of Denver um, and you were there before. I was fortunate enough to spend quite a bit of time in Denver in the late 90s and was able to really remember what that part of the city was like and compared to now, and it is mind-blowing how much more activity there is that's going on. So the moral of the story is one, don't be afraid to think big. Um, and that goes for all of us, right? When, when we come to things like this, this is our opportunity as a community to express our thoughts and add our own input to ideas and come up with them. And this isn't the first time this has happened in Salt Lake, right? So one of the examples that I think everybody knows about in, in our city is the Nine Line Trail, right? So that started, that was actually, took a different path. That was uh, put in the city's plan way back in the 80s. And it wasn't until a student group at the University of Utah through one of their classes refined that plan and figured out how to convince the city that it was a feasible plan to get it going. 
it also helped that uh, some entities of the city were working on consolidating rail lines, something that also happened in Denver, to free up that space so it could be something else. And so part of that thinking big is thinking about the interrelatedness of it and how it can be uh, transferred and used and all of the things that happen as a result of that. And that's the world of urban planning, really. And, uh, you know, some of us are urban planners by education and profession, but I think I would suggest that everybody in the room who is here is also an urban planner, right? Because you are here thinking about these things. You're interested in it. You want to know more. And I'm willing to bet almost everybody here wants to see it happen. I don't know if you... I mean, there's probably some people who have some real hesitations, some real questions, but that's part of that urban planning process. And so I, I just want to, one, thank everybody for coming out and participating in it. And I don't want to steal the thunder of the presentation from, from the rest of the group, but hopefully I can be able to set the stage of how these things happen so that we can all collectively think about how we can overcome barriers and how we can get the ball rolling so it becomes reality. Thanks.